This is video number eight from uh, Digital Dash University with our series concerning linear algebra. In this video, we want to take a brief look at elementary matrices and determinants. And in the last video, we talked about matrix multiplication and we discussed how an identity matrix exists. Um, this is identity matrix would be for a 3 by 3 matrix, but they all have the same form where the identity matrix, all the elements are 0 except for the diagonal elements and those are equal to 1. Now there's three different types of elementary matrices. The first general type would be obtained by exchanging two of the rows in the identical matrix. So here you see we exchange the first row and the second row. Now we didn't have to do it that way. We could have exchanged the second row and the third row or the first row and the third row. Um, either way would produce an elementary matrix of type 1. That is where we did a row change on the uh, identity matrix. Now let's see what happens when we have an elementary matrix of type 1 specifically where we interchanged the second row and the first row and we multiply a matrix by that elementary matrix. So here we would do it by going over and going down to get the first element and you can see this would be 0 plus 1 plus 1 times this plus 0 so the first element is A21 now to get the number beneath that, we go across and down, so we would have A11 and then all the other num elements would be 0 because we'd have A11 times this plus 0 times this plus 0 times this, so this is A11. Then to get the third element in the column, we go across and down, so we have 0, 0, A31. And we go ahead and do the same thing now to get the second number here. We go across and down on the second column, and that's going to give us A22 because we have these two zeros here. To get this number here, then, we would go across and down the third row and that will give us A23 because we'd have 0, A23, 0, add them all up, we still have A23. And if you keep proceeding like that, you see what, you hap what happens is that we have our original matrix except the first, the first and second row are exchanged. This was the first row, it's now in the position of the second row. This was the second row, it's now in the position of the first row. So an elementary matrix, this is type 1, that was obtained by interchanging the first two rows of the identity matrix. Well, when another matrix is multiplied by this elementary matrix, it produces the same effect as to how, what changes were made on the identical matrix to get the elementary matrix. Here, we exchange the first and second rows to get this elementary matrix. Now we multiply any matrix by it, it has the same effect. It exchanges the first and second rows. Another, different, another type of elementary matrix could be obtained by multiplying one or more rows of the identity matrix by some constant. For example, here, this would be the identity matrix just simply multiplied, the last row being multiplied by 3. We didn't have to do it that way. We could have multiplied any of the rows by some constant number. But this will show the effect when we have this type of elementary matrix, multiply another matrix by it, and it multiplies the third row by the same number. This elementary matrix was obtained by multiplying the third row of the identity matrix by 3. Now when another matrix is multiplied by this elementary matrix, this has the same effect on this matrix. 
the third row is multiplied by 3. Now suppose, as we were doing in our previous videos in Gaussian elimination, suppose that we imagine multiplying one of these rows by some constant number and adding it to another row. For example, imagine multiplying this row by 3 and then adding it to the first row. That would change the first row to 1, 0, 3, which gives us our third type of elementary matrix. That is one that's obtained by imagine multiplying one of the rows of the identity matrix by a number and then adding it to another row. Now with this type of elementary matrix, the third type, when another matrix is multiplied by it, go ahead, follow the steps of the matrix multiplication, and we see what we end up with is the first row with the third row added to it. So the elementary matrices, the way that they're obtained, three different types, however they're obtained, they have that same effect when another matrix is multiplied by that elementary matrix. Now, we just did a specific example here where the third row was multiplied by the number 3 and added to the first row. Of course, it could be any number you multiply, and you could add it to any row, and you'd have a third type of elementary matrix. Also, we said in the last video that in general, when you multiply matrices, they are, it's not commutative. Now here, you can do this exercise. If you have the matrix, call it matrix A, on the left, and you have the elementary matrix on the right, then what will happen is the first, instead of the first two rows being interchanged, the first two columns will be interchanged. And here, if matrix A was on the left and our elementary matrix was to the right, and we did the multiplication, what you would see is that the third column would be multiplied by 3 instead of the third row. And in our other example, if this was on the right and we did the multiplication, what you would discover is the third column would have the first column added to it instead of having the first row with the third row added to it. Um, if you have some time, try that exercise and you see that that works. Here we just did the full demonstration where the elementary matrix is on the left. And the reason for that is we use these operations of exchanging rows, multiplying a row by a constant, imagine multiplying a row by some constant and adding it to another row. Those are the types of, uh, of operations that we do in Gaussian elimination or in uh, row echelon technique. They're just different names for the same thing. But those are the different types of technique that we use. So essentially what it means is that when we were doing those manipulations, we were effectively starting with a matrix and we were multiplying it by a series of elementary matrices to get it in upper triangular form or reduced echelon form, whatever we were trying to do. Now, another aspect about these elementary matrices, here, here is the identity matrix, and here was elementary matrix of type 1, where for this specific example, we interchanged the first two rows. Well, what happens if we multiply this matrix by itself? Will this interchange the first and second row again? And if you go ahead and do the multiplication, you see that it does. So now we're back to having the identity matrix. So what this means is that for an elementary matrix of type 1, this is a type 1 elementary matrix, multiply it by itself, and you get the identity matrix. So that means for a type 1 elementary matrix, it is its own inverse.
Now, let's take a look at the type 2 elementary matrix. I should say the specific example that we used, which was this. If we multiply by another elementary matrix of the same type, that is, where one of the rows is multiplied by a constant, specifically the third row, but not by 3, but by 1 third, multiply this out, and you get the identity matrix. Now in this case, for the type 2 elementary matrix, its inverse is not the same, but it is another elementary matrix of type 2 to get the identity element. So for an elementary matrix of type 2, its inverse exists, and it's going to be another elementary matrix of type 2. For the type 1, they're both their own inverses. Now, here for the type 3 elementary matrix, where we took the identity matrix, multiplied this row by 3, and added it to the first row, if we multiply it by this matrix, where here then we're taking the third row, multiplying it by minus 3, in other words, subtracting it from the first row, it undoes the operation of this one, and we end up with the identity matrix again. So here, for an elementary matrix of type 3, its inverse is another elementary matrix of type 3. And really, that's all we wanted to say about the elementary matrices. Um, find any book, and you can find a description of them. They're pretty simple, but actually, they're rather fun to work with, too. Now, with that out of the way, we just briefly want to spend a couple of minutes talking about determinants. And we're not going to go beyond a 3x3 three three matrix. But as you probably are aware, if you have a matrix, say, A11, A12, A21, A22, if you just have a 2x2 two two matrix, then to get the determinant, it's just this number times this number minus this number times this number, just simply do the, uh, the cross multiplication. Now, if we have one, a 3 by 3 matrix, like this, then it's a little bit more work. Now what we do is we expand it by minors. So to do that, we're just going to go across. We can do it in a number of ways. We're just going to simply do it by going across the top row here, and here we say, all right, we take the first number here, A11, and then we're going to form a 2 by 2 submatrix simply by covering up the first row and the first column. So this gets covered up, this gets covered up, and there's the 2 by 2 matrix that's left over. It's right here. Then we have minus the second number in the top row, minus A112. And again, we form our 2 by 2 submatrix, cover up the first row, cover up the column that it's in. And here is the submatrix, A21, A31, A23, A33. We have it right here. Then the final step go to the third number and form a submatrix, cover up the column that it's in, cover up the row that it's in, and there's the submatrix, which we have written right here. Then one more step, multiply this times this minus this times this by that number, same thing for here, and eventually you grind out the determinant. Let's just take an example that might clarify this. Suppose that we have this determinant. OK, I should say this matrix, you want to get the determinant of this. It will equal 3 times the subdeterminant. Cover up the row, 
cover up the column and we have minus two three three two then it's minus the next number in the row the front row the top row that's two and we go ahead and we make another two by two sub matrix cover up the column that this appears in cover up the row that it's in and we have one two three two and then we have plus four and we form our two by two sub matrix cover up the row that it appears in cover up the column and we have one two minus two three okay there it is and let's see what do we have here here we have 2 times minus 2 that's negative 4 minus 9 this is minus 13 for this 2 by 2 matrix and here we have 2 minus 6 that's negative 4 for that sub matrix and here we have 3 minus negative 4, that would be 3 plus 4, this is 7. So we have 3 times from here, and this is negative 4 minus 9, that's negative 4 plus negative 9. It's very easy to make a silly mistake when you're working with these determinants and matrices. So don't do what I did. Use some caution here. It'll save you a lot of grief further down the road. Okay, so now we have this is 3 times minus 13. And here we have negative 4 times negative 2. That's plus 8. And then here we have plus 7 times 4. That is plus 28. This is minus 39. This would be plus 36. So the determinant is negative 3. And again, typically involves a lot of number crunching, and it gets to be tedious. And as you can see, it's very easy to slip up and make a silly mistake. So when you have to do these things, take your time, don't be in a hurry, and go back and check your work for mistakes, because it's very easy to make a silly mistake along the way. Um, one thing that we want to say before we close the video out about determinants, or just to list some of their common properties, if we multiply the determinant a row or a column by a constant number, then that multiplies the determinant of that matrix by a constant number. If you're working uh, with a matrix and you have two rows or two columns that are the same number, then the determinant is going to come out to be zero. And if you have two matrices multiplied together, the determinant of that matrix is the same as multiplying each the determinant of each individual matrix together. And these two we won't discuss. We'll save this for the next video. We want to use what we've learned about determinants to help us understand more of the properties of some of the square matrices, specifically singular and non-singular matrices. So come back, join us for that video. Let's wrap up this discussion, and then we have a little bit more background material to cover, then we can start solving some problems.